All right, everyone, welcome back for the episode of This Week in Charts via Carnival Trades and Wall Street for Main Street. If you've not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on CarnivalTrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it this week. So we did have a shortened week. Uh, we're now pretty much all the way through that holiday period here, and you can see, um, you know, obviously uh, Monday, half day. I did the video on Monday last week. Uh, very, very light volume. We, we did pick up a little bit towards the end of the week. I would say f Thursday, Friday was actually average. Um, but for the most part, I think you still had a lot of, you know, big institutional traders, fund managers, etc. on vacation. Um, and the next week that should, um, you know, kind of come back to some normalcy. We do have some data coming up. We have CPI on Wednesday. And then we have bank earnings starting to come out. Uh, so earnings season coming in. Uh, into full swing soon and then of course the week after we have the FOMC but we had some interesting price action nonetheless so we started off just kind of uh, really range bound we pulled back uh, into Thursday and then we got a nice little pop off of that 20 moving average and Friday um, I'll take a look at the intraday here we had a you know a gap down on the NFP number we rallied up and then um, we had a pretty sharp sell-off nothing crazy but um, you know no technical damage here but we did sell off pretty nicely so a few things about this week we did have the ADP number that came in absolutely scorching hot uh, more than double the estimates and then the NFP number Friday um, was actually a little bit lower not crazy low but it was a low, little lower than estimates um, why is this important what is this what does this mean a lot of things happened here uh, so really if I'm not mistaken so obviously the Fed paused in June this will be the first time that they're going to hike rates. It's, I think odds are 86% now um, that they're going to hike rates in July. And this will be the first time that that's happened um, where the Fed paused and then kept hiking. Usually when they pause, it means they're just going to they're going to continue to uh, they're going to hold it there and then they eventually they pivot. Um, so I believe this would be a first ever. I've already told you guys my theory on that. I they have to refill the TGA. They're trying to get the um, you know the Uncle Sam a little bit of a deal. So that's that was my theory there, um, which they're still doing. But um, either way, that number came in very hot. Now what what else have I been talking to you? I've been hammering it um, on my channel. I've been hammering it to my members. Um, but it's not a coincidence. So I said this. I said to you guys last week. I said watch the two year yield. Because if we get that to eclipse the Fed funds rate, that's where you can see some volatility. Now take a look at Thursday. Um, and we flip over here to trading view. We'll see the two-year yield. That got above the Fed funds rate. So effective Fed funds rate is 5.08 currently. And we did pierce double top. What happened, and this was right off of the ADP number in the morning. And what happened with markets, they went right down. Um, but they came off the lows right around, you know, 1130 in, in the morning. Why did that happen? Let's flip back over to the two year yield. And we look on an intraday basis. Broke back below 5.08 around 11 a.m. OK, so it is not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that the two year yield right here, March 13th, broke below 4.5, which then was the effective Fed funds rate, uh, broke below that for the first time. And it's not a coincidence that March 13th was the bottom for this for this sell here. Um, so, and a lot you could make a case that's the reason for this rally. So, watch that yield. And I told you last week as well. If this gets above the Fed funds rate before the Fed meeting, um, it's going to be problematic for markets. Now, the Fed has a chance to to catch up to the curve here with a rate hike. So, it's likely they're going to do 25 basis points. That is priced in uh, at this point. But if this starts to continue higher and it starts to get above, say, 525, uh, that's not going to be able to stop. So there's the market's going to be a little bit of a pickle. The Fed's going to be a little bit of a pickle here. But that is what you need to be watching. Moving forward, that's really um, all the Fed cares about as far as policy. Everybody's, you know, we can talk about yields here, and we will. Um, you know, people have been asking, oh, the 10 years rallying, the 10 years rallying, why aren't stocks falling? That's the reason. you got to get that two-year, you know, to get ahead of where the Fed is. And that's where you can see volatility come in. But we did see some volatility Friday. Nonetheless, still only finished down 25 base, uh, basis points, but no real technical damage. Again, targets that I've talked about the last you know, week or so and are, are really relatively the same. So if we look at the, um, you know, we're going to kind of look at this 450 area. 
There's also the uh, you know 75 retrace right in that zone 447 ish 448. Um, there's also a measured move too. And this is a you know pretty mathematical easy tech uh, calculation there 348, and then you just add it to the high. So uh, 418, and then 381, and then it takes you up to you know right in that 450 zone. So there's some technical reasons that we could get a pop, maybe CPI. Um, you know, maybe inflation's defeated, you know, maybe it comes in um, cooler. I don't think that's the case, but you could get um, some type of a big move off of that regardless. Uh, maybe it's the inverse of what happens, what happened in October where we got a really big down move and then that was the low. Maybe this is a, a push up here. But either way, um, that's the levels we're watching here. If you take this pivot out, then we're going down to 420, um, possibly 415 on the spider so really simple there uh, as far as the levels are concerned uh, triple Q's here again can st still remain a little bit on the weaker side I know it doesn't look like it but you have one two potentially three lower highs now on the daily I mean I know it's not a big one but when you compare it to the spiders again you actually have a, a slight higher high and I've talked about this lately I think if the market's going to move higher it's going to need to come from um, some of these other sectors that need to catch up, right? We all talked about this for months. It's seven stocks. It's a seven stock rally. Uh, and we need to see, you know, small caps, industrials, mats, um, you know, financials, energy, all that, all those other sectors. We need to see those start to catch up. And that's starting to happen a little bit here. Um, so again, spiders making that double top, triple Qs, I think are still, you know, you take a look at the weekly, you know, that weekly 20 moving average is still sitting at 330. That's a long way away. And you're into, you know, a lot of resistance with these pivots. You're also into a 75% retrace. So there's, there's technical resistance here and we're extended going into it. So I think you could get a scenario where, remember how in May the Qs started to take off, right? But the spiders were kind of just still stuck in the mud right here. I think you could get some type of a, a flipping of the script there if we're going to move higher. So I still, I'm still less bullish here on the cues. Uh, more so, I'd be more bullish on you know other other sectors and other things that haven't run yet. But either way, um, again, simple pivot high there, uh, 373. You take that out on a weekly close, we can go higher. Now, if you take this out, then it's probably down to this trend line, which you know kind of coincides there with that 50 moving average. A bigger correction in the Qs would take you down to this purple trend line here. So really simple there as well. Dow here, again, pulled back on Friday like everything else. If you take this pivot out, it's down to 331.45. If you take this out, it's up to 348. Pretty simple. Uh, the Russell was strong on Friday, though. So again, you're going to need to see more of this. So here's the IWM. This can still get to 192, 192.50. Uh, no real technical damage, really volatile right now. You know, big move up to one, 189 and change, and then down to 180, right back up and right back down. But you do have higher lows. This can still get to that price target, so nothing has really changed there. SMH here, that ended up flat here. There's a little mini kind of head and shoulder here that has not triggered. You know, if we break this trend line on a closing basis, it can trigger. And that would, you know, probably take you down to the 135, 136 area. There's a trend line right there. There's also, a, I mean, a big air pocket up here too with that gap. So um, just be aware of that. But SMH holding up for now. We won't make too much out of it yet. IGV Cloud Software, again, still very extended here on the weekly like the Qs. And again, a bigger correction could take you to that trend line that I did not mean to remove. There we go. If we extend that out again, coinciding with the 20 week moving average again. So pretty simple here. Again, we went up and tagged that pivot and now we're just backing off. No real problems just yet. But um, again, a correction would take you down there. Transports have held up nicely. Uh, DJT, again, we talked about that level. We hit that and it's holding up. So we'll see if that moving average, that 20 MA can catch up. Then, you know, maybe it can consolidate for a move here. But again, that has been resistance. So there's your uh, inside bar pivot breakdown tagged it once, tagged it twice, and now you're back up there again. But you are a little short-term overbought, so it probably does need to consolidate. If it's going to move, uh, airlines, I believe, have earnings this week. I think we're starting to see those come out. So that will be market moving, and that will obviously affect the transport. So keep an eye out for that. All right, over to interest rates. We talked about the two-year already, but I want to look at the 10-year. Um, you know, I mean, that's a clean breakout there. So look at that trend line. Nice. Weekly consolidation here inside bar. 
and a big pop. So that's holding up right now. Um, you know, can this reverse right now and, and, and fake that out? Yeah, it's possible. But I mean, it looks pretty clean right now until proven otherwise. So yields holding up really well. 30 year also back above this pivot here. So if you can get above this, then it's up to 4.2, 4.25. Um, but yields hanging in there. Again, we talked about this ascending triangle. Nice, you know, like green bar and then pull back and then a pop. So no problems there on the 30 year and yields continuing to hold up even the five year um, that made a new 52 week high as well or uh, very close excuse me so very close but it did hit double top just like the two year which by the way the two year uh, this week hit a 16 year high so we got to go back to 2007 uh, for the last time the two year yield was at that point but anyways over to housing xhp that did pull back a little bit this week no damage yet but if you take this out um, yeah, then maybe it opens the door back for 74. We'd have to see, wait and see here. Um, but right now, trend is still up. Um, no real technical damage, but it did pull back. ITB, same thing. If you break down um, from this pivot, you know, then maybe you can get down to that 78 handle, but not yet. Um, nothing is broken just yet on that. VNQ, which, you know, VNQ, these real estate, these REITs, you know, um, it tried, you know, it put in a good effort Monday, Tuesday to get above this 84 handle. We've been watching this all the way since March. And, um, you know, we tried to get above here. We couldn't, you know, one, two close, tried to confirm it, and then right back down. So still weak. Now, here's the positive. You do have higher lows, right? So as you're hitting this, and you do have a higher high there. So this can, th I'm not saying this can't break out, but it's just struggling very hard. Um, if you get through that, you know, you know, there's going to be a, I would say 86 right here in the near term, maybe even 87.50. If it gets some momentum, it could squeeze up. Um, but again, yeah, still struggling with that 84 handle, but it does have those higher lows. So we'll give it the benefit of the doubt there for now. Uh, fins here, XLF. Um, so again, decent kind of choppy week here. Still don't love fins on the weekly. Remember, down move sideways to up. So you're kind of, you can make a case you're still in sort of a bear channel there on the XLF weekly. I don't, you know, I don't see financials being anywhere out of the woods right now. The only one I really like uh, is JPM. That's the only one that's holding up really well. Uh, KRE here, still in a lot of trouble. Again, head and shoulders hasn't triggered, but it's there. Um, and again, either way, weekly, you know, that looks like a bear flag to me, not a good chart there. Either way you look at it, same thing with KBE. Um, and broker dealers holding up okay though that can still get to 490 if we take out these pivots here so xbd still hanging in there just fine all right let's flip over here and shift gears to commodities you start off with crude as always so crude had a nice bid on friday up 2.6 percent they should test 74 75 if it gets through that you can get to 76 and then there's your 200 moving average right there again and that would also coincide with that big trend line Right, so right in that vicinity, 74, 70, uh, 74, 75, and then 76, 77. Still has a lot of work to do here, um, but it's chopping around, and I, I haven't changed my opinion on it yet. Um, it's still just in a range. If it shapes up and firms up, we can talk about it, but for right now, um, it is still range found. Now, the energy equities, um, XLE here, that had a big surge on Friday, still um, weekly, you're still inside of this big red candle. So I'm not in love with it just yet. Um, if you can take that out, then things change here. But it did have a nice pop on Friday. XOP. That held up okay this week. You had a nice inside hammer, or inside doji rather, on the weekly. You had a big power move last week above this trend line. And then nothing wrong. You tested the lows essentially and then uh, closed right back up near the highs. So that's okay on the weekly. Um, still not in love with it yet. I want to see a little bit more. The one that really pushed up is oih oil services that had a powerhouse move on friday uh slb i believe they did a deal with petrobras so that was up 8.6 um and the levels what i've been telling you guys i give you these levels here um and they're good so we got above 280 right on a weekly close and i said that's your first step next step is above 280 290 excuse me 292 82 to negate this red bar high on a closing basis and we did that so OIH is bullish right now. Now I don't, I wouldn't advise chasing it because look at what you're going into. So flip back over to the weekly, that big red bar, you have an inside bar, both, both lag, and it broke down. So there's gonna be bag holders there. 
don't chase it here let it give you consolidation and if it gives us consolidation i'll be jumping on it myself but that is a power move with volume on the oih so oil services shaping up here so uh, energy equities uh behaving a little bit better than oil itself maybe that's a sign um, but nice move there for the oih nat gas um, that pulled back a little bit more this week still no problems here still have a nice little daily green bar there also the weekly looks fine to me as well so that is setting up a base and again uh, speaking of nat gas and, and the equities you know chesapeake holding up okay eqt um, that's still in a nice uptrend. AR actually took profits on this uh, this week with members, um, but that had a nice bounce back on Friday. Um, EOG, LN, nice pop there on Friday for EOG, and then LNG also holding up okay. So again, sort of the, the, the energy stocks are holding up better um, than the energies themselves. Maybe that's a sign here. Um, but either way, that's the energy sector for right now. Let's get over to extend, extend the energy sector and go to uh, CCJ. Again, nothing's changed here. We're still looking at weekly consolidation. If it continues to do that, it can get through this pivot, but it's still just kind of cooking in the oven right now. Nothing really to do with it. Currently, URNM, again, that pulled back a little bit more here, but again, I like how you closed above that red bar and negated it. A little bit more of a pullback. This can move higher, so no real updates there for uranium, but a lot of choppiness right now. Um, the potash plays MOS, big pop. Again, so I told you guys, you know, I gave these guys, gave this level to my members, um, a few weeks ago, the 618 on Mosaic. I told you guys I like it here for the last couple of weeks. What do we get? We pierce it a little bit, a little bull flag there on the weekly, and then a big pop. So this can push up, I'm going to say, to 40 bucks right now. Um, so that's MOS. Intrepid, nice bid, closed above this red bar high on a weekly close. So that is a sign of strength there. Now it is still, you know, you got a lot of resistance here, but. That's a sign of strength, good volume behind that. And NTR also gave this level to my members as well. Up move, bull flag, and then a pop. Didn't pop as much as the other ones on Friday, but that still looks fine. That can get up to 65 on the weekly. And if you get through that, then it's up to 69.70. So the potash name is looking a little bit better here and shaping up nicely. Um, I am watching wheat very closely here um, for swing and possibly long-term trades here. I do like this level that it hit a few weeks ago. We're just watching for a pullback there as well. As far as that's concerned, DBC here is still in a choppy range. Nothing has really changed there. All right, uh, let's flip over here to the, uh, let's get to the dollar index. So DXY here, that had a little bit of a breakdown on Friday. So remember I was saying earlier, you know, we kind of firmed up a little bit earlier in the week and late last week. But we still have work to do, right? We never closed above this red bar high on a daily, and we never closed above, we never even challenged it really. We never closed above the weekly red bar high at 103.75. So, still, you know, even though you firmed up on the daily, the weekly is still dominant, right? So, this is pushing down. I'm not touching the dollar right now. I don't know what it wants to do here. It does look a little weak. Um, we'll see how it behaves around 102, 101.75, and then. You know, we'll kind of go from there. If it takes that out, then maybe it wants to go Pierce 100. And I get, remember I told you guys a, a while ago, I thought that's what it was going to do, is go Pierce that level. Maybe it does after all, um, but dollar index pulling back a little bit. So we'll see. How, I mean, I know the Eurozone is, um, you know, th their inflation is much worse. There's a lot of pressure there. So again, that's pushing the dollar, helping to push the dollar down. Anyways, uh, gold here. So gold getting a little bit of a bid, nice pop on Friday. Again, holding that 1900 handle, there's going to be resistance at 1950 if you push up. If you go down, 1850 is your really big level. So pretty simple there. Um, again, 50 and 100 week moving average right in that zone. So that's going to be a good weekly level there for gold. For silver, the level is still 21 until proven otherwise. Um, but it's, you know, had a nice pop there. There still is resistance, resistance at 2350 and 24 bucks. I want to get it at 21 though. And then platinum here that is still in a downtrend trying to hold this double bottom if it takes that out 850 860 i like that level there or pl futures and palladium still in a downtrend here you do you can make a case you have a big i put this in the other day a big falling wedge so if you can you know push get one more push down this could be a pretty good buying opportunity we'll continue to watch this i've been i've had this on my radar for a while um there's a ton of support at 1075 i don't know if it gets that low you know, you get that's another 
I mean, yeah, that's another like 20, you know, 15% or so. Uh, but either way, a lot of support there, but I like that falling wedge. We'll continue to watch it. But remember, Palladium's very thin, so um, it doesn't take much for it to, to get a big bid or a big sell-off. Uh, copper here, no real changes. It did get a little bit of a pop, a little, little bid there, and then pull back, and then a bid Friday. I still think that wants to go test 340. Nothing's really changed. All right, lastly, over to Bitcoin. Um, so Bitcoin still, if I can get my chart. There we go. Bitcoin's still holding up, no problems. Um, nice inside bar on the daily. 20 moving averages caught up to price now. That can go higher. That can still go to 32.5 to 32, well, we'll say 33, okay? Um, I did take profits with members on Riot this week. We did play a Bitcoin miner. So some of these names here are still holding up really well. Marathon, MSTR. So some of the miners are, are getting bids. Um, Coinbase, although it's not a miner, got a nice move off the lows. Are, maybe these are leading. Yeah, you know, maybe it's a little bit of a leading indicator that the miners are moving and the Bitcoin equities are moving. Um, I'm not sure, but Bitcoin didn't really respond Friday like all those miners did, uh, especially Riot. But either way, still the upside bias until proven otherwise. 32,500 to 33. Ether, a little bit on the softer side. This can still get to 2,000, maybe 10, 20, or, uh, excuse me, 20, 20. So, so that's the level there for ETH. But I don't really see any problems here in the crypto sector. All right, anyways, let's back over to the spiders here. Again, remember CPI on Wednesday. Then we have uh, earnings season starting to kick off, starting with banks and I believe a few airline stocks. Um, and then, of course, FOMC next week. Big takeaway, though, watch that two-year yield. If that breaks 5.08 again, it's going to put volatility into the in, into stocks. It's really that simple. Um, as far as the levels are concerned, again, 450, maybe a pierce of 450 on the spider. That's your really your next big upside level. If you take this out, then on the downside, you know, you're know you looking at probably 420, maybe 410, 415. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find Jason on Patreon. Come find me on carnivaltrades.com. I'll talk to you guys all next week.